สวัสดีค่ะ and welcome back to it brain site here on GBN station you're now with me Gon Gon o s h i t Pan today we have news update from Upper Tamagaya Temple in Thailand followed by the inauguration of Kushinaga Airport as a Buddhist tourist hub the launch of a new Buddhist app the makeover of the three Buddhist galleries and lastly the temple tour in China. The effects of d i a n m u tropical storm on 23rd September 2021 caused the heavy rain, followed by the flood and the flash flood in many areas. The flood victims of more than 200,000 households had difficulties in their living. w i p a t a m a g a y a the m a g a y a Foundation, and lay people throughout the world offer relief supply bags to those suffering from this flood. v e n e r a b l e Prakul Samut s a n i t w o n g w u t i w a n g s o Director of Communication Department, w a t p a t a m a g a y a mentioned that during 28 September to 13 October 2021, w a t p a t a m a g a y a the m a g a y a Foundation, and lay people throughout the world provided relief supply bags to the flood victims, consisting of ready-to-eat food. Dry food and drinking water by handing them to the morality promotion centers in 12 provinces: n a k h o n s a w a n g a m p a n g p e t l o b u l i s u k o t h a i c h a y a p o m n a k h o n r a c h a s i m a p r a n a k h o n s i a y u t h y a k h o n g e n t a k s i n g b u r i c h a i n a t and s a r a b u r i The thing in relief supply bags are canned fish, crispy fish, canned food. Canned fish in chili sauce, pickled mustard, instant noodles, rice, and bottled drinking water, which are donated by lay people at the 71st anniversary kitchen building, Wat p a t a m a g a y a The total number of donated relief supply bags are 12,300, with a value of 3.6 million baht," said Venerable p r a k u s a m u t s a n i t w o n g w u t i w a n g s o Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi inaugurated the Kushinagar International Airport in Uttar Pradesh, that connects the key Buddhist pilgrimage sites in India. Kushinagar is believed to be the final resting place of the Gautama Buddha, and therefore is an important Buddhist pilgrimage destination. The government of India is specially focusing on the development of places associated with Lord Buddha through better connectivity and creation of facilities for devotees to visit the Buddhist pilgrimage centers in India. Lumpini, the birthplace of the Lord Buddha, is not far from Kushinagar. Sarnath, where Lord Buddha gave the first sermon, is also within a radius of around 150 kilometers from Kushinagar. Both Gaya, where Buddha attained enlightenment, is also a few hours' drive from Kushinagar. Certainly, India has done great service to the cause of Buddhist religion by facilitating the Buddhist devotees to visit and pay their respects to the Lord Buddha. This is particularly so, since the Buddhist devotees everywhere in the world desire to visit the birthplace of the Lord Buddha and pray there at least once in their life. A large contingent of Buddhist monks from different countries were invited for the inaugural program of Kushinagar Airport. Buddhist monks and diplomats from 12 countries with predominant Buddhist population, namely Sri Lanka, South Korea, Nepal, Singapore, Japan, Mongolia, Myanmar, Vietnam, Laos, Bhutan. Cambodia and Thailand participated in the inaugural function. As a part of its ongoing mission to translate and publish all surviving texts preserved into Tibetan Buddhist canon, the global non-profit initiative 84,000 translating the words of the Lord Buddha, founded by the renowned Bhutanese Lama, author and filmmaker. Dongza Jamya Kengjing Rinpoche has announced the imminent official launch later this month of a new app for iOS and Android devices that will offer interactive tools for accessing original Buddhist texts from the convenience of your smartphone. By placing the sacred Buddhist texts at the fingertips of Buddhists all over the world, 
84,000 said it aims to help practitioners and scholars more easily find resilience in the Buddha's teachings on the nature of reality, to share inspiring passages and quotes with friends and loved ones, and to make offline learning, studying, and practicing more convenient. The forthcoming app includes a dynamic collection of Buddhist sutras encompassing teachings on everything from meditation techniques to epic and inspirational journeys and narratives, from profound presentations of philosophical logic to short stories illustrating the workings of karma. Access to sutra-specific introductions that articulate its key concepts, its narrative framework, and its socio-historical context. Interactive reading tools such as pop-up definitions of key terms like samsara or non-duality in a comprehensive trilingual glossary. Search functions that allow you to look for characters, places, or philosophical concepts such as Manjusi, Varanasi, or Buddhistita. Ability to read bilingually or to compare translations with source division e kang your folios integrated throughout the publications. A 10,000 square foot space across three halls at the National Museum has been dedicated to displaying priceless central ancient antiques that were part of its repository for a decade, but never really got a moment in the spotlight. With this, it will be the fourth museum in the world to display such a collection after museums in the UK, Germany, and Russia, said to Bhathanad, further director general of the museum. From 12,000 works from the 3rd and 12th centuries discovered by the noted archaeologist Mark Goyalstein during his central ancient expeditions in 1900 to 1916 and brought to India, as many as 170 masterpieces have been carefully selected for display. The Central Ancient Antique Gallery now displays large basilic murals, silk paintings, and banner from the Dunhuang Library Cave in China, and a large number of funeral objects and textiles from Astana tombs. According to estimates, three coral rupees and three long years have been spent putting this together, as most objects had to be preserved and reshaped before they could be put up for display. In addition to the expansive Central Ancient Antiquities Gallery, the adjoining building next to it, reserved as the Archaeological Survey of India headquarters for 2018, has been transformed into a kind of Buddha museum, while an augmented reality-based experience has been created for Ajana Caves at NM. Together, the three new galleries aim to establish India's credentials as the birthplace of Buddhism, from which is later spread to other countries. The entire makeover project is aimed at the G20 summit, which is scheduled to take place in 2023, when many heads of state and government and other dignitaries will visit the capital. The goal is to make the museum the country's cultural exhibit and show our Buddhist heritage to those who are not aware of it, said the officials. The Buddhist monastery Ruin Temple, located in Mongol Autonomous County in Fusin, a city in the northeastern Liaoning province, is a religious shrine that embodies the cultures of Han, Manchu, Mongol, and Tibet. Built in 1669, the temple runs from south to north, with the center part as its major construction. It follows the structure of Futal Palace to some extent, but makes a greater variation that combines the architectural styles of different ethnic groups. The Great Hall is surrounded by four halls that sit on four different hills, linked by a 6,000-meter-long road, with hundreds of stone-carved Buddha sculptures on each side. The Hall of Living Buddha is made up of two structures in the east and west, with a total of 999 rooms and seven doors. Each room and window is posted with green and red auspicious patterns. The quiet and spacious courtyards, 
and neat, well-organized streets give the entire area an aura of serenity and sacredness. Each generation of the living Buddha was highly respected by the emperors, and every year they traveled to the capital to recite sutra and hold worship ceremonies for the royal family. Today, it is a popular tourist destination where visitors can enjoy not only exotic architecture, but also many beautiful Mongol paintings, medication books, and an ancient astronomical calendar system. And today we have special merit from Johannesburg Meditation Center that all of you can take part no matter where you are. Let's take a look. Sawadikap. Good morning, everybody. My name is John Bird. I'm affectionately known as Uncle John here at the JMC in Midran. My motivation is manifold. I come to the temple to better my understanding of the teachings of the Lord Buddha. I, I come for the peace and tranquility of the temple, and I come to prepare myself for my journey into the next life by accumulating merit and making myself a better person. I've gained the ability to meditate. I've also been able to experience the life of a monk firsthand. And, and I've also been able to experience the, the warmth and dedication of the Thai community at the temple. As a director, I've been able to build a relationship between the monks and the supporters of the JMC. And I've also been able to assist in the day-to-day -day running of the, of the temple here in Midran. It's also been an opportunity for me to accumulate merit for myself. I feel very privileged that I've been able to give my, my time and my experience. I'm very excited to be a part of the process of establishing the new temple in Cape Town. It's, it's been many years in, in coming and the Thai community in Cape Town have been waiting for a long time. It'll be a wonderful place of worship and fellowship. It'll be a permanent place for the Thai community and locals alike to experience the joy of meditation and the teachings of the Lord Buddha. The establishment of the new temple in Cape Town is a wonderful opportunity to build a place of worship and, and fellowship, a chance to, to make a place to continue the deep-rooted culture of Buddhism in the Thai community that have, are living so far away from their home country. I would like to invite everybody to take part in, in this opportunity to support the establishment of the new temple in Cape Town and to share in the merit-making and help support in this exciting time. Satu. Hello, I'm Eleanor Hall. I'm 63 years of age. I'm a mother, a wife and a grandmother. Do not do any official work. I work from home. I service my family. I live in Cape Town, which is in South Africa, in a small little town called Bloberg which is absolutely amazing. We have the sea, we have the mountains, we have everything. I first met Nit about seven years ago and I've had a lot to do with her family. I've gone to visit her family and it's she's such a good example of what I want to be. I want to have that same in the peace that she has. I want to be able to share that with other people so they can also have it. And that is why we're just so lucky that you actually are here now. Oh, the benefits are unbelievable because just meeting monks and realizing you are just human like us and you have found this 
wonderful inner peace and love it just wants you to like spread it you just want to spread it around so everyone can enjoy that as well oh i think it's going to be amazing for people especially in the area because you're close and it's a place for people to go where i believe you can find fellowship you can find love you can find comfort and we can spread the word because cape town is like 20 minutes away there's so many people looking for this and we've never had really a place to go to before and now it's just for us i'm just so thankful please this is such a wonderful opportunity for people to find that inner peace and spread the word and let everybody know that you're out there and i'm sure people will flock in because it's what people are looking for. Good morning everybody. My name is Henry Madini. I the part of the Thai Meditation Center in Johannesburg. Uh, my motivation of being in the Johannesburg Meditation Center one, it gives me a variety of a lot of self-thoughts and lessons about my life. I'm actually glad to be here and also be understanding the teaching of Lord Buddha because it makes me discover about what is my purpose of life and I get to understand more about the, my inability. I'm motivated mainly because of I enjoy the meditation so much and it makes me harmonious and peaceful. I've gained many benefits from being a part of the temple. One, I would say my daily routine, I'm a Muay Thai athlete, and it gives me a lot of uh, calmness to be in a part of the good uh, community of meditation and the fellowship. Main benefits I become very calm as a person. I can do things in a bad way. And meditation, it actually benefited me with a lot of calmness and kind to others and to my fellow athletes and to the people in my community. Those are the most benefits that I've actually gained as a member of the temple. I also believe that in Cape Town, we are about to be completing the meditation center. And I'm very excited to hear the news. And I think the people of Cape Town, they will be very much benefiting from it because they will learn a lot about the teaching of our Lord Buddha. And they will be learning a lot about the, the culture of meditation. I would love to invite everyone to support the Cape Town uh, Meditation Center. And everyone who's the surrounding as like I mentioned before, it will be very beneficial for the young and old and every people. And I know uh, meditation to some people sounds a little bit different because not many people understand it. But then it would be nice if they can come to the temple and get to learn about what is a Thai temple, what is the meditation is all about. It's always a great benefit from understanding how to meditate. And I would like to see people of Cape Town coming in large numbers and come and support the temple. Let us make Johannesburg Meditation Center be a place where the people in South Africa find inner peace and true happiness. Let us send it prayer inside with the Lord Buddha's Dhamma Code. Having abandoned discontent and delight and household thoughts entirely, one should not nurture lust towards anything. The lustless one without delight, he is indeed a piku. And now it's time for us to say goodbye. Please make sure to check out all episodes of our Edinburgh Insight News program on our website, gbnus.com. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful week. สวัสดีค่ะ.